Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to dive into building a REST API using Spring Boot, JPA and H2. If you're looking to quickly prototype an application, this powerful stack will help you get up and running in no time. Spring Boot makes it super easy to set up a scalable and production ready REST API, while JPA takes care of the database layer and H2 provides an in-memory database for fast prototyping and testing. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully functional API that stores data in memory and can be the foundation for your next big project. Before starting to write any code, let's have a look at how our program is going to look like. So we will be having a client, we can even call it user, that will be sending a request to our Spring Boot application. This Spring Boot application will have two methods, a post method to create a user and a get method to retrieve all the saved users. When a post request to create a user will be received, this request will be processed by the Spring Boot app and sent as a create request to H2DB. And when we are going to do a get all request, this request will be fulfilled by the DB. So we will send a get request and the database is going to return back a list of all the users. Probably this arrow could be pointed the other way around. I just wanted to show where data is coming from for the get and where data is going to when we do a post or a create. So this is how our flow looks like. As you can see, it's quite simple, nothing too complicated. So let's jump right into it. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to use the Spring Initializer app. So you need to go onto this URL, star.spring.io, and we're going to create a project which is going to use Maven, language, uh, you can leave Java, and I'm going to use Spring Boot version 3.3.4. Let's give it a name, so let's call it JPA H2 project. Um, we can leave the rest the same. So you can change the package name if you want. So let's say, let's call it jpa.h2.project. And we can leave the packaging as jar. And I will be using Java 17. We need to add a couple of dependencies. So we can just do it from here. So if you scroll a bit down, we need the Spring Web module. We are going to add Lombok. We need JPA, so it's Spring Data JPA, and we're going to use H2. Uh, H2 is an in-memory database, uh, which is very similar to uh, SQL. It's quite easy to go from H2 to a MySQL database, Oracle database, and etc. So let's select this one, and once you have all these dependencies, let's click Generate. So once you click generate, this will be downloaded. What we need to do is extract this zip file and just open it using an IDE. I'm going to be use IntelliJ Community Edition. So once you open your project in your IDE, so in this case, as I said, I'm using IntelliJ, this is what you should see. We have a source folder where we have our uh, main method. So this is what will start the application. We need to create an endpoint first. So to do that, we're going to create a controller class. So let's start by creating a new package in here. I'll call it controller. And now let's create a new class in here. So let's call it user controller. So this is going to be our controller class. This will handle all the incoming requests. We need to add some tags. So this is going to be a REST controller. And then we need to define the request mapping. So this is the endpoint that we will be calling slash API slash V1 slash users. So this controller will have two functions. One is create a user and the second one is get all users. So these are the two endpoints we will be implementing. So the first one is a post mapping for creates. So we create our method public user, create user, and we're going to get the request body and use it to create our user object, which we haven't created yet, but we'll do it in a bit. And then we're going to perform our operations in here. And then let's create our get request. This is the get mapping. One call, this will return a list of users. 
and it's going to be called get all users this is rad because this class does not exist yet so what we're going to do is we're going to create an entity class so let's create another package and let's call it entity an entity class is a description of a table in a database uh, so i think this will be clearer when we do it actually let's create our user class let's uh, add some annotation so this is an entity what it means is each instance of this user class will be a record in our SQL database and we need some uh, getters and setters. We're going to use Lombok to just uh, do this quicker. Let's set a table name as well. So this is not compulsory, but because user is a reserved word in uh, SQL, we cannot just leave it blank. This will throw an error. So we'll call our table app user each record in this table app user will be mapped in our application as a user object so let's define some columns so we are going to need an id and we are going to set it as a generated value and we can set a strategy so this is going to be the identifying columns we'll set it as generation type dot identity and this is going to be a id so we can use the long next our user will have a name so this is a string and then let's say we're going to save their email and uh, let's just create uh, an empty constructor as well we can actually use lombok to create this constructor so we can leave this quite simple so we can say all rx constructor and no arcs constructor so these two lombok annotations will create constructors for us so we don't have to do it we have defined our entity class user this object will be a record in our app user table and our app user table will have these three columns id name and email so whenever we're going to create a user this is what we need to pass name and email because the id will be auto generated by our code next step let's go back to our controller we need to actually refactor this entity needs to be at the same level as controller so let's just do a bit of refactoring and this is how it should look like in our controller class let's import what we have just created make sure to import the entity class and not uh, something else that was an arrow so this is user and we need to import the list from java util okay as you can see we have our two post and get methods but they're not doing much uh, for now so we need a service class in order to be able to connect to our database and perform operations so we are going to create a user service class we will be using methods in this user service class to perform operations so when a create is called we are going to call create user and we will pass our user when we want to retrieve a list of users, we'll just simply return. Uh, we're missing a return. So here we need to return user service dot get all users. And now let's create this service class. Again, let's create a new package in order to neatly organize our code and we'll call it service. And now let's create our Java class and call it user service. So user service is a service class. So let's add our Spring Boot annotation. What is this service class going to do? As we saw earlier, we have two methods in our user controller. We have a create user and get all users. These are the two methods we need to implement. So let's create them. So public user is going to return a user and it's going to create a user as well. And it will be getting a user as a parameter so and we'll be doing a bunch of operations in here and the second method is the get public list of users and we are going to call the get all users 
and we'll simply uh, we'll do some operations in here. So let's import the list. Let's import the user service in our controller class as well. So these errors will go away. Now we need to implement these two classes in our service class. What do we want to do at this point is we want to connect to our database and we want to perform database operations. In order to do this, we need to create a repository class. So this class will be the one handling all the connections with the database. We will be creating a user repository. Let's call it user repository. This will be auto wired. And then in this user repository, we will be creating, uh, actually we won't be creating anything. We will be using our save method. This is part of the JPA. And we return this and then we simply return user repository and we can literally do find all. So these two methods are red for now. And that's because we need to actually create our user repository. Let's create a new package. Let's call it repository. And now in here, let's create a user repository class. This actually is not a class, but is a public interface. And this interface extends JPA repository. And here what you need to pass is user, which is the entity class that maps to a table inside our H2 database. And here we're going to pass along. So let's import this. This user is the entity class we created earlier. And we have created a user repository and we have extended the JPA repository abstract class. And here we're going to mark this class as a repository class. So in my mistake, JPA repository is an uh, interface. If we go back to our uh, service class, we can import this user repository we just created. And as you can see, the errors are gone. And if you go inside command and click, you can see these are crude commands that you can simply use. So save, save all. For example, we're also using find all. And these are methods which you don't need to implement. This will be handled by JPA. JPA will save your user in the database. It will use, when you call this find all, JPA will convert this into a SQL query and then it will send it to the database and retrieve your results and actually create Java objects. In this case, it will create user objects and return a list. So we have done all of this. What we need to do is just uh, define some properties for our H2 database. So if you go to resources and open application.properties, we need to do some H2 database configurations. And these are the ones we actually need. I'll quickly go through them. You can just stop the video and copy these. Uh, we're going to define a URL for our JDBC and we need to give it a name. So we'll call it testDB. Username and password, these are up to you. I'll just, I'm just going to use root and password. Let's enable the console as well. And let's also add this path property so we can see on the H2 UI as the data gets added. Once this is done, we are almost ready to run our application. We need to create a run configuration. So go at the top, click on current file and then edit configurations. And let's add a new configuration for an application. Let's give it a name. I'll call it JPA H2. You can just call it whatever you want. Let's select our main class, which is this one, the initial class that was automatically created by Spring Initializer. And you can leave the rest as default. And let's click apply and okay. Now you can see we have a new run configurations and you can click here on the run button. Let's enable this as well. As you can see, our application has started. So this application is ready to receive requests. I'm going to use Postman to send requests, but it's up to you what client you want to use to send requests. Okay, let's go to our H2 console first. So this is the URL you can call if you've followed exactly how I did it. 
So let's press enter. You will be shown this UI. Uh, what you need to do here is put the username. Uh, we had root and password. And then click on connect. And as you can see, when the application run, our app user table was created with the columns we defined, so ID, email, and name. If you click on here on the table name, it will automatically create a SQL query for you, and you can just click run. And as you can see, we have nothing in them at the moment, so our database is empty. So let's add some users to this table. Okay, I will be using Postman to create my requests. So if you open Postman, you click plus, it is going to create you an empty request. Let's query our database and let's make sure it's empty. So it's going to be HTTP colon double slash localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash users let's see what we get okay so this is returning a 500 uh, i think there must be an error in the code let's go and have a look the error is in the user controller class and i think i know what's happening basically we missed the auto word annotation so let's add that and let's rerun our application so stop and rerun and let's try again so let's send our request again. And as you can see, this time the request has gone through. So we've got our 200 back and our uh, database is empty. So we got nothing back. Let's now try to create a user. So we're going to create a post request. The endpoint is the same, but this time we need to send a body in the request. And this is going to be of type JSON. Uh, we have to send name. Uh, I'll just call it journey and then let's give it an email as well and I don't know test at gmail.com and let's send so the request has gone through and this has been created with id1 and now if we try to retrieve this we get back our user that we just created so let's create another one I don't know let's call it lead journey 2 and let's leave the same email this has created another user with ID2. So if you keep pressing send, it's going to keep generating different users and each time it will generate a new ID for them. And now if you go back and do a get request, we can see that we have received all the users that we generated. Let's have a look in the H2 database and see what's happening over there. So we're back on our H2 UI. So you should already have the query select star from app user. And if you click run again, we actually uh, have to log in again because we restarted our application. So if we do password, click connect and now click on the table name app user and click run. As you can see, we have all the users we just created in a table over here. So this was a simple REST API built using Spring Boot, JPA, and H2. And as you can see, it didn't take as long to create an endpoint, connect to the database using JPA, and uh, saving data and testing this was very quick. And you can go ahead and uh, be creative with this. You can implement this in your applications. Uh, you know how to use a database now, how to use JPA. And you can go there and explore and create a project for your portfolio. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it somewhat useful to reach your goal. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it allows me to keep creating more and better content for you, all completely free of charge. See you on the next video.